How can you get your citizenship faster? By joining the military, of course. But when can you get that N-426 signed? I've gotten a lot of questions about how and when to do this. Well, each branch has a little bit of a different way you can do this, depending on how they treat your reserve components beforehand and what they do while you are at training. In episode four, I'm going to talk about how you can get that N-426 signed in each branch and each component. Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Team Will Bob. I'm Staff Sergeant Robert Williams, a recruiting and retention NCO for the Washington Army National Guard. Do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and that bell icon so you can get my videos in the future. And if it's helpful, please hit that like button so that the algorithm will show it to more people. When are you really in the military and how fast can you get that signed? A note here, we're currently in what's called a designated period of conflict. And that is from 9-11-2001 until the present, until that gets changed. And it has not been changed. That one year waiting period is not a thing right now. You can apply for your citizenship as soon as you can get that N-426 signed. And that's going to be the part where we're discussing here. For the active duty of all branches, you will swear in again the day you go to ship out. And that's actually the first day you are considered to be in the military. Because of this, those of you who are going to be in an active component must wait until or after at least your basic training, boot camp, whatever they call it for the branch you're going into. The reserve components are treated differently depending on the branch. Now, the reserve components are the National Guard and the reserves. Only the Army and the Air Force have National Guard. The Army, the Air Force, the Navy, the Marines, and the Coast Guard all have the reserves. The Space Force does not have a reserve component yet. For the Army, for your active duty right now, the training bases are not set up. There's no infrastructure for you to be able to get that N-426 signed. So as soon as you get to your first duty station, that's where you can do your application. In the Army National Guard and the Army Reserves, you are considered to be in the military starting the day you sign your contract. From that point, you have to wait for your information to be loaded into the Army systems, which usually takes a couple weeks. And then after that, they will make you go to one of your drill weekends. Though in theory, in some circumstances, you could get your N-426 signed without going to that, but they can require you and virtually always require you to do one drill weekend so that you can be in a paid status as an active member of the military at least once, which strengthens your case and also shows that you are in good standing, which is a requirement of federal law for you to be able to get your citizenship through military service. Moving on to the Air Force. A key note here is that with the Air Force, you will go to MEPS for only your physical, and then you will sign your contract in the office with your recruiter. This is different from all of the other branches. For active duty, you will bring all of your documentation, all of your information to training with you. And once you complete basic training, you will go to your tech school. And at your tech school, there are personnel there who will help you with the process. They will get the N-426 signed for you and they will enable you to be able to actually go through the application. For the Air Force Reserves, just like the Army Reserves, your contract starts the day you sign it. And you will be going to a training drill weekends where you are paid and you are a full-fledged member of the Air Force at that point. But the guidance given to the recruiters that I've spoken with is that they will use the same guidance as the active duty. You're gonna get it done in tech school. However, the memo that put out that guidance specifically says active duty, so I'm trying to get some clarification on that for you. Though I have been unable thus far to get a response from the point of contact on the memo itself. For the Air National Guard, same thing. You go to a training flight where you will actually be doing something very similar to our recruit sustainment program in the Army side, where you learn the basics of being in the Air Force and you're set up for success in your training pipeline. Again, 
I'm still doing research on this one because the recruiters I spoke with didn't know the answer yet. And in my state, the person who signs for the Army National Guard soldiers before they ship to training is a member of the Joint Staff. So it's very likely that they will be the same person who would sign for the Air National Guard if we're allowed to get that to happen. I will be trying to get you more clarification on that. So my video next month, hopefully will have that answer. Okay, what about the Navy? Well, in the Navy, you are in the delayed entry program for active duty, but you're also in the delayed entry program for the reserves. They do not do any drill weekends before they ship to boot camp. Both the active duty Navy and the Navy reserves can do their application and get their N-426 signed when you're at your A school, which is your job school, directly after boot camp. They have personnel at those training bases specifically to help you through the process. And then there's the Coast Guard, which just like the Navy, the active duty and the reservists go into a delayed entry program. So you're gonna go straight to that boot camp. And the difference here is that most of you are gonna go straight from that boot camp to your first duty station. And then later on you apply for your A school, which is your regular job training. Once you are at your first duty station, then you can get your N-426 signed. And since you're out in the fleet, you can actually do, do it normally just like uh, when the Army does it after completing their training. What about the Marines? Well, just like the Navy and the Coast Guard, both the Active Duty Marine Corps and the Marine Corps Reserve does a delayed entry program. So for them, similar to Active Duty Army, you have to finish boot camp, MCT, and your AIT. And then once you get to your first duty station, you can get your N-426 signed and you can apply for your citizenship. Because, also just like the Army, they currently just don't have the infrastructure set up for you to be able to do this process in your job schooling. And then there was the Space Force. Those guys fall under the Air Force, so since they're only in active duty, they're going to do the same process. Once you get to your tech school, there are personnel there who will be able to help you through that process, as I mentioned earlier. However, this might not be much of an issue because most, if not all, of the jobs currently in the Space Force require a security clearance and you cannot get one of those from the DOD if you are not a U.S. citizen. Oh man, that is a wide range of time frames for getting your process started, but you can get your citizenship through any armed service. I hope that this has been helpful for you and I will get that clarification for the Air Force Reserve components for next month's video because I want you to have the best possible information. Thank you for watching Team Will Bob and learning about how and when you can get your N-426 signed so you can get your citizenship through military service. I'm going to be making these videos monthly now so I can get you the most current up-to-date information as often as possible. Please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button if you've not already done so, so you can get those future videos. If you have any questions, just put them down in the comment sections, or you can give me a call, a text, or send me a Facebook, WhatsApp, or Instagram message. See you next time.